Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the, the last council meeting for the year, on the 9th of December. This is the ordinary council meeting, uh, and the time is nine o'clock. Uh, attendance, I can see everyone's in full attendance this morning. Good morning, all. And we'll move straight to an acknowledgement of country by Councillor Kunzelman. Thank you, Mayor. We recognise that there are traditional custodians of this land on which we meet and make important decisions. The spirit of those traditional custodians is with us today as we try to make the best decisions on the use of that land. We pay respect to those traditional custodians acknowledge past, acknowledging past and present leaders and the encouragement of new leaders as they emerge. Thank you very much, Councillor Kunzman. We'll move on to the opening prayer. And Councillor Tully, may I ask you to lead us into prayer? Thank you, Mayor. Heavenly Father, we seek you to be with us in this meeting today. Assist us to be an example to others, bringing strength and encouragement in whatever we do and equip us for the ongoing challenges as they arise. Give us the guidance to continue to make wise decisions for both the short and long-term benefit of our city and our community, regardless however difficult and unpopular some will be. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Councillor Tully. Um, we move on to apologies and leave of absence. I have none. So we to item five, which is the condolences. And I understand, Councillor Milligan, you have a condolence motion that you'd like to speak to. Thank you, Mayor. I move that Council express its condolences on behalf of the city to the family of Mr Matthew Bowden. We wish to celebrate Matthew's life and his immense contribution to the Marburg community. Matthew passed away on the 24th of November at the age of 42 after a brave battle with cancer. Matt was a sportsman, family man, had a hilarious sense of humour and was loved by his entire community. He was always up for a chat and was the sort of bloke everyone wanted to call their friend. The leading man of the Marburg Hotel, Matthew lived and breathed the community's pub. He was the third generation to take the reins of the hotel following in the footsteps of his father Dan and grandfather Yub. The family story began in 1936 when a young Yub Bowden came to the small country town of Marburg with a dream. The family struggled to keep the pub going through the Great Depression, during the Second World War and the closure of the coal mines. But eight decades later, the Bowden family still provides a place where the people of Marburg and tourists can gather, celebrate special occasions, make lifelong friends and, of course, grab an ice cold beer at the end of a long day. To this day, regular patrons of the Marburg Hotel say it's like being in an extended family. The Marburg Hotel was run for decades by Yub and was known as Yub's Pub for a long time. Matthew's father, Dan, bought it 40 years ago and Matthew was at the helm of the community hub for most of the last decade. Matthew shared his father and grandfather's love of the pub and the community. Yub was known for saying, if there was a light on inside, it's okay for people to come in and have a beer, no matter the time. Matthew was excited to take over the pub from his father Dan and said his aim was to get the pub back as the town's focal point. It was such a big part of the town over the years and I think it's a, lost that a bit, he said in the Queensland Times in 2015. Matt was determined to put his own stamp on the pub and keep the family legacy continuing into the future. He was well and truly on his way and was an instrumental in slowly but surely bringing the old pub back to life. <coughs> Up until his final days, Matthew continued to keep an eye on operations at his beloved pub. Family and friends celebrated Matthew's life on the 2nd of December at St Mary's Church, and this will be followed by an interment at Tallagalla Cemetery. The Marburg community, as are we, are heartbroken by the passing of Matthew. On behalf of the city, I offer our thoughts and prayers for his partner, Lauren, and five-year-old daughter, Miller. 
We are grateful for the time and passion Matthew put into the Marburg community. He is and will continue to be well and truly missed. Thank you, Councillor Milligan. I think um, 42 is, very, is too young to go and um, that would be very much missed. So you're moving that condolence motion? Yep. Do I have a seconder to that? Thank you, Council Island. All those in favour? It's unanimous and carried. Thank you. We move on to item seven, which is the presentation of petitions. And um, we've received a petition from the residents of Kamira requesting council consider shade trees and other structures for the dog off, off leash park at Kamira. May I ask if one of the division two councils would like to speak to this petition? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to uh, speak to it and thank Kathleen for bringing this to our attention. Obviously, um, we, uh, all encouraging of dog parks, uh, that they increase physical activity, um, social interactions, and um, all dog parks should also be inclusive of all um, dogs and their pet owners. So I believe that they should be interacting um, in safety, uh, no matter the breed that you have. So I'm just wondering if we can um, refer... Oh, so I move the motion that we receive and then refer this to the GIW committee. Thank you. So I'd say that the motion is that the petition be received and referred to the GIW committee for consideration and a report back to council. Do you have a time frame that you'd like that back? Well, I look at the CEO. Um, may I uh, request a suggested time frame? CEO? Where's Mr. Hilliard? Oh, Where's Mr. Mr. Martin? <laughs> would you like to offer advice, Mr. Martin, on how long we would need to be able to consider that appropriately and come back to council? Mm -hmm. Is that February 22? February. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the February round of the ordinary. Thank you. Well, we said that we're going to the GIW, so... Yes, yeah, so we probably don't need the part of it, the ordinary, yeah. Move to the February GIW. Is that okay? Deputy Mayor, will you wish to... The GOW has full delegations. That's okay? Thank you. I'll open that. It's been moved by uh, the Deputy Mayor and seconded by Councillor Tully. I'll open up for discussion. Thank you, Councillor Tully. Yeah, just briefly, and I think um, the standing orders restrict... Um, I'm talking about the merits of this, but just to explain very, very briefly that there's an existing uh, park there, dog park, off-leash off dog park, uh, but none for uh, small dogs. And when I went out there, the uh, resident said that the big dogs were maybe not eating, but <laughs> harassing the small dogs. So uh, whatever can be done uh, when that comes up, I'd, I'd uh, certainly be supportive of it. Thank you, Councillor Tully. Any other discussion? I put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous and carried. Thank you. Move on to item eight, which is presentations and deputations, and there, there are none. Uh, public participation, there is a none. So we move on to 10, declarations of interest and matters on the agenda. Do we have any declarations before us? Thank you, Councillor Madsen. Uh, thank you, Mayor. In accordance with section 150 EQ of the Local Government Act 2009, I, Councillor Jacob Madsen, form the meeting that I have a declarable conflict of interest in items 14.6, minutes of Ipswich Central Redevelopment Committee, 14.7, minutes of special meeting of Ipswich Central Redevelopment Committee, 
Um, items 15.6, development application 15770 slash 2021 slash MCU. And 15.7, development application 16204 slash 2021 slash MCU. The nature of the declarable conflict of interest is I'm on the executive of the Ipswich Trades Hall and Labor Day Committee. And our building in the Ipswich Trades Hall is very much adjacent and or nearby to some matters in uh, those four items. Um, as a result of my conflict of interest, I will leave the meeting room while the matter is considered and voted on. Thank you very much, Councillor Madsen. Appreciate the disclosure. Are there any other disclosures? Thanks, Mayor. Yep. Um, in accordance with Section 150EQ of the Local Government Act of 2009, I, Councillor Andrew Fechner, informed the meeting that I have declarable conflict of interest in items number 14.6, 14.7, 15 15.6 and 15.7 as read in the agenda. The nature of my declarable conflict of interest are my business interests in both A1A Proprietary Limited and Bar Heisenberg Proprietary Limited, both located in the top of town in Ipswich. I plan on dealing with my conflict by leaving the room while those matters are discussed and voted on. Thank you very much, Councillor Fechner. Are there any other disclosures of declarations of interest? No? Thank you very much, Councillor Mads and Councillor Fechner for your openness and for disclosing those and managing them properly. We move on to item 11, which is the confirmation of minutes. So I move that the, that the minutes of the ordinary meeting held on the 18th of November 2021 be confirmed. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Leakin. I'll open up for any discussion or questions. There being none, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous. Thank you. We've got item 12, which is a, a mayoral minute. And Vicky, if you could put the mayoral minute up there. And the mayoral minute has three recommendations that the council denames the Paul Pasali Bridge at Springfield Central and conducts community consultation on renaming in line with council's naming procedure. And that council denames Pasali Drive Umanto and conducts landholder and community consultation on renaming in line with council's naming procedure. And C, that a report be prepared for a council meeting no later than May 2022 that outlines community sentiment on the renaming costs associated and options for the potential renaming of these assets in line with Council's naming procedure. Being a mayoral minute, it's moved and seconded, so I'll speak to it. Since our election in March 2020, this Council has made significant progress in advancing the City of Ipswich and putting to bed the City's challenges of the past. In the past 20 months, we've done a lot to repair the reputation of our City and have established this Council as one of the most open and transparent in Australia. From the launch of the Transparency Integrity Hub to live streaming and documenting our decision-making processes for all to see, the appointment of our new CEO, as well as the incredible progress being made to revitalise our once forgotten CBD, there's a lot for this council to be proud of. However, in closing the door to Ipswich's past, there is one issue that we have not yet resolved. Like many of you, it is something that I made a commitment to address as part of my election campaign, and something I believe is still important to the Ipswich community the name of a former mayor who has been found guilty of serious crimes, such as 27 counts of fraud, attempting to pervert the course of justice, perjury, official corruption, and very sadly, two counts of sexual assault against a 23-year-old woman, remains etched into our public places and is seen by many in the community as an embarrassing reminder of a previous era. Council's naming procedure PD006 section 1.4.15 states that Council may consider renaming a road or another named facility where the name is that of a person who has been convicted of an indictable offence under the Criminal Code or an electoral offence contrary to the Local Government Act. I'm not proposing that we rewrite our city's history or remove all references to this former Mayor. It's part of our history. However, feedback from residents and businesses suggests that there is interest in revisiting the name of two assets that continue to be a source of embarrassment for our city. This motion proposes renaming of two council-owned assets connected to Paul Pasali, the Paul Pasali Bridge and the Pasali Drive Umanto, and conducting community consultation to rename them in line with council's naming procedure. I believe our community wants us to move on from the actions of the past and should be given the opportunity to have a say how we close the book on this chapter. I open it up for any discussion. 
There being no discussion, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. I go around the room. Those in favour of myself, Councillor Madsen, Councillor Doyle, Councillor Fechner, Councillor Milligan, Councillor Kunzelman. Those against? There are none. Those abstaining? There are three abstentions. Uh, Councillor the Deputy Mayor and Councillor Tully. The motion is carried. Thank you. Moving on to item 13, which is business outstanding, including conduct matters and matters lying on the table. There are nil. So we'll move on to item 14, which is the reception and consideration of committee reports. I'll move on first to the Growth, Infrastructure and Waste Committee. Uh, and as the chair, I move that the Growth, Infrastructure and Waste Committee report, uh, number 2021 in brackets 11, of the 1st of December 2021 be noted. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Kunzelman. I open those, that report up for any discussion. No? Thank you very much. I'll put that to the vote. Those in favour? It's unanimous and carried. Thank you. I move to 14.2, which is the Governance and Transparency Committee. And I'll hand over to the Chair of the GTC if you'd like to move and speak to that. Yes, I would like to move the report um, on the uh, minutes of that committee. Um, in regards to the items that we dealt with, I'd refer to the reports. They're all quite substantive. I believe we've all read them, and that's enough for me. Thank you. So moving all items in batch one through to seven. Thank you very much, Councillor Madison. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Milligan. Any discussion on the GTC? No, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous and carried. I now move on to item 14.3, which is the Community, Culture, Arts and Sports Committee. I'll hand over to the Chair of that committee, if you'd like to move yes, that Chair, and speak I'd to I'd like to move that Council adopt the recommendations of the Community, Culture, Arts and Sports Committee. Uh, from the 1st of December 2021, um, the substantive highlights from the committee um, were the recap on the wonderful Spark Festival, um, which we all uh, were very excited about, and f there was lots of forward-focused conversation in the committee about what we might be able to achieve next year with an even bigger and better um, Spark Festival. Um, we recommended to the full council to change and alter the opening hours of the Rosewood Library to better fit the community out there, um, which is also a wonderful win um, for the local community. Um, and we just generally discussed all of the achievements of the committee of the year, and I think that um, the highlight could have gone on for another five to ten minutes more, and um, it was a great opportunity for us to stop and reflect on um, you know, how busy we have been this year and all of the things that we were able to achieve. Often we're looking to our next problem or we're looking, you know, to our next big event and we don't often get time to reflect on that. So um, the live stream of last week's committee um, was, would be really worthwhile to re-watch if you want to recap of all of the wonderful things that we as a committee have been able to achieve and drive um, this year. And I'm really proud of that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Kornsman. I'll open it up for discussion. I think the only thing I'd like to um, thank you, Councillor Fechner and Councillor Kornsman, for your leadership of this particular committee. It's so important to the integral part of our, our community spirit. Thank you very much. I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous and carried. Moving on to item 14.4 which is the Economic and Interdevelopment Committee. I'll hand over to the Chair of that to, to probably move and to um, speak to it. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I'd just like to move the recommendations um, from that committee uh, and just go on to say that the small business growth program that, um, that we moved to adopt in the committee, that I suggest everyone move as well here, um, I'm really, really excited for our small business community that some of this will kick off early next year. Um, there's some really great programs there to get our small businesses up um, on, you know, e-commerce platforms um, or to uh, look to new endeavours to, you know, strategise. And some of these things, small business owners don't uh, 
particularly put their mind to because they're too busy trying to do their principal work and, and make the money and put um, food on the table. So I'm really supportive of the program. And um, there was also a uh, economic development update. And in that, I would just like to call out that I met one of the gentlemen that um, used our small business uh, food truck friendly program during COVID. And he actually uh, told me on the weekend that it helped him survive through the pandemic. So he was able to go through parks um, in Ipswich and um, keep, uh, keep trading throughout uh, and he couldn't get that anywhere else. So he um, was really, really thankful. And his name is Russell from Loving Donuts. A big shout out to Russell. Um, and I, I didn't initiate the conversation. I went to get a donut. Um, and, and he was, yeah. We, so even just that alone has touched someone in our region. And I, yeah, I just think that that's fantastic. And there's so much more that um, that update represents as well from operation scale up um, to, you know, all of our grants that we've um, put through COVID for our small businesses as well. But I just wanted to mention Russell because his donuts are awesome and, and we helped him in his small business. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Johnick, for moving that. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Manson. Open up for any discussion. Like I say, it's, it's great to see the, uh, our policies such as the Food Truck Friendly uh, Council that, that Council Madsen initiated is, is being used and utilised within our city. If there's no other discussion, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous and carried. Thank you. We now move on to item 14.5, which is the Environment Sustainability Committee. I'll hand over to the chair of that to, to move and to speak to the, the committee. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to move that the uh, recommendations of the uh, last uh, committee meeting uh, be adopted by Council. Uh, the makeup being uh, two agenda items and um, one, um, also one uh, matter arising. Uh, the items specifically were the adoption of the sustainability strategy. A uh, very large piece of work that uh, Council has undertaken. Uh, I'd like to further commend uh, officers of the branch for the uh, extensive work that has been undertaken. Uh, the sustainability strategy is one of those items that touches on every other part of work that this organisation does. Um, so it is uh, uh, a very substantive uh, piece of work. The other main item was the outcomes of the Youth Sustainability Summit. A report was provided on that, but most importantly was a very amazing uh, presentation to committee by the Sustainability Squad uh, from Springfield Central State School. Uh, wonderful young people came in and detailed to us their efforts and activities uh, towards uh, promotion of a better world for the future. So I would like to express uh, to those young people and all students who attended the Sustainability Summit uh, for their input and, and the fantastic outcomes uh, that they've achieved. The matter arising uh, that was dealt with was the update on the traditional owner reference group um, whereby a report um, uh, it was discussed at the 16th September 2021 uh, Council meeting. It was referred to the November Environment Sustainability Committee. For further consideration, uh, the committee noted that a report is scheduled to be submitted to the February 2022 Environment Sustainability Committee. Uh, with that, Mayor, I um, have uh, moved the motion. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Councillor. And Councillor Fitton, your second? And, and to our own, um, if we're under discussion, our, our very own sustainability squad, <laughs> yourself, council and council effective, thank you very much for your very active leadership um, in, in, this, in this space. Any discussion? Just through yes. you, Mayor, I just, um, the sustainability squad thanks the council very much for being so welcoming. They, um, it was a bit of a highlight for them, so. 
Thank you. Thank you. I think it was a highlight for us. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Councillor Wigan. If I may add to that, Mayor, uh, I must say, uh, even at my young age, uh, uh, no, only halfway there, uh, <laughs> that uh, just meeting and interacting with those uh, young leaders uh, within their school community, that if uh, that's the quality of leadership we'll have in the future, I will sleep very well at night knowing that the, in the future they'll be looking after matters on our behalf. Thank you, Councillor Willigan. I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. That's unanimous and carried. Thank you. I'll move on to item 14.6. i just note that today we'll have two reports from the Ipswich Central Redevelopment Committee. Yes. Thank you. Um, just note today we will have two reports from the Eastwich Central Redevelopment Committee. One is the one that was held last week and one is from the special meeting that we held this morning at, at 8 o'clock. So I'll go on to the first one which is 14.6, the Eastwich Central Redevelopment Committee and I'll hand over to the Chair of that committee to see if she'd like to move that and, and uh, speak to it. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, I confirm um, the recommendation that Council adopt uh, recommendations of the Ipswich Central uh, Redevelopment Committee, 1st of December 2021. Um, there were a number of um, reports, I guess, um, if I could just make a, a general yes. comment in, in relation to my committee this year, I'd just um, uh, like to um, call out the Nicholas Street Precinct team for activation of the space. Um, we currently have our, our Christmas uh, in, in Nicholas Street uh, or St Nicholas Street um, uh, Christmas um, activities and, and events underway. The, the group need to be commended for activating the space um, as we move our way through uh, filling uh, the, the, the tenancies. Um, it, it's been um, so important for Council to activate the space and, and they've done that beautifully. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Do I have a seconder for this? Thank you, Council Kunzelman. Um, would you like to speak to or discuss this matter? No, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. And it's unanimous and carried. And now move to item 14.7, which is the special Ipswich Central Redevelopment Committee that was held at 8 o'clock this morning. This morning. Again, I'll um, refer to uh, the chair of that, if she would like to move and speak to that. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, um, I move that Council adopt in, uh, the recommendations of the Special Ipswich Central Redevelopment Committee Report, number 12, 2021, uh, today's date being the 9th of December, 2021. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Council Councilman. I'll move into discussion, and if you do need to go into closed session, just, just let me know, but yes, I thought... Thank you, Mayor. I would just um, like to start um, by saying um, what a way to end the year. Today's uh, special. We, um, we, we've moved to a position where we, we have a, a new lease, another new lease, another new tenant um, ready um, to, to set up in our Nicholas Street precinct. And then uh, secondly, and, and so importantly, we're moving one step closer to uh, securing our cinema operator. We're moving into the final leg of, of negotiations um, and expect potentially around uh, three, in three months' time, uh, the commercial aspects of that deal will be presented to council for a decision. Uh, just um, really, really excited to be in this position and, and can I just say with a queue of um, prospective tenants um, 
uh, entering into legal um, negotiations with council. Um, so uh, a, a great way to end the year. Yep. Agreed, Councillor Doyle. Thank you. Um, any other discussion on that item? No? I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous and carried. Thank you. I'll just pause now to wait for Council Madsen and Council Fechner to return. Thank you very much. We'll move on, move on now to officers' reports. And item 15 is uh, the development application recommendation uh, 5636-2021 MCU Community Youth Child Care Centre for 54 to 56 Arthur Somerville's Road, Carolee. Uh, may I, would anyone like to ask the relevant council officer any questions on this? Am I getting a nod? Yes. Yes, may I ask for the relevant councillors to come to the lectern, please? Please set your name and your job title. Uh, good morning, Marion Councillors. Anthony Bowles, Acting Development Planning Manager. Thank you. Councillor Doyle. I guess if I could just start with a general question um, across Ipswich and, and across our Division uh, 3 that Councillor Fechner and I um, look after. Uh, daycare centres are opening um, very regularly mm -hmm. and, and not all um, come before council for a decision. Can I just understand why this one's coming to council? Yeah, uh, that, that's correct. We do get quite a lot of applications for childcare centres. Um, this is the only one we've brought to council in recent time. The reason this has been brought to council is due to the number of submissions received on the development application, received uh, 280 properly made submissions, and, and that's the reason why it's been brought to council. Thank you. Any other questions of Mr. Bowles? No, thank you. With thank that, you. sorry, oh, yeah. Um, with quite a significant amount of uh, properly made submissions against, um, the officer's recommendation here is to approve. Um, I think um, it might be worth, for the record, um, just stepping, um, stepping us through exactly um, the reasons as to why we are approving this application when there is so much mm -hmm. um, community unrest about this. Um, and it's probably worth noting um, the timing of responses from the applicant mm -hmm. um, to council, mm -hmm. um, the independent review panel process in all of this, um, and what the applicant's thoughts are around the recommendations of the independent review panel process. Um, and then supplementary to that, I guess, Council's ultimate conditions that we put on it. There's 26 very strict conditions um, on this uh, development approval that sits before us today. And I think that um, I've seen a bit of correspondence through the inbox and questions in the community with regards to um, a general feeling that the applicant hasn't responded to mm -hmm. the independent panel uh, review process or, or, or the recommendations of that group. I mean, the applicant, is it correct they had an opportunity to respond to the independent review panel? Yep, I, I can talk through that if you like and yep. we'll step through the process. That would be great. Yeah, yep. sure. So uh, the starting point, I suppose, is the, um, the number of submissions, 280 submissions. Uh, in addition to triggering the need for the application to be decided by council, it also triggered the need for the independent decision review panel process, which also included a public hearing component. So the public hearing component was held and there were a number of community members who addressed the panel directly. Uh, there was quite good attendance from the community at the panel hearing. Um, it was a, an impressive uh, session and the, um, the views of the panel, uh, well, the attendees were expressed really, really well and the panel were able to uh, hear the concerns from the, concern of the community, not just by reading the submissions, they were here to, able to hear them and, and have them express in the clearest terms possible. So the panel, um, having heard those views and read the views and read the application material, uh, considered the application and made some recommendations to council to 
um, change the proposal uh, fairly significantly. Um, the original proposal, or the, the proposal after the information request was a childcare centre for up to 100 children. Um, the recommendation from the panel was to reduce the number of children to 75 children, a maximum of 75 children. The basis of that decision, or the discrepancy between the 100 children that we were originally um, recommending and the 75 children from the, or maximum 75 children from the um, independent decision review panel, stems from the um, community need, whether it's an acute, immediate community need or a longer term community need. So in the report, you'll see that there are some time frames that deal with when that capacity will be consumed. So I think it is in 2026, there will be a need for about 20, uh, 71 spaces. So that's, that's a fairly short term um, need. We're talking five years and then we'll be reaching the rough limit of that facility. So the original recommendation for 100 spaces um, allows for um, community growth up to 2041. So that explains the discrepancy between the 100 spaces to the 75 spaces. However, uh, one of the fortunate benefits of reducing the um, size of the childcare centre is we deal with a lot of the other impacts that the community were concerned about. So there were concerns about um, the number of parking spaces, there was concerns about manoeuvring of vehicles uh, for effluent collection, concerns mm. about noise and things like that. So uh, <coughs> those concerns were, were heard. Uh, there is still more work to be done by the applicant um, with the conditions we've imposed. Um, but uh, those are the things that the, the panel considered when they made their recommendation to council. So the next step after the recommendation, um, uh, the council officers gave the applicant an opportunity to respond to these points. Um, we issued a letter and the recommendation, and we sought changes to the proposal to match the IDRIP recommendations. There was a small amount of changes made to the proposal, but the, the main change, the key change, the reduction of the number of children, wasn't something the applicant was um, willing to do at that point in time. So what we've done is we've imposed conditions that we require the applicant to submit plans showing a new facility with a uh, reduction of um, number of children the, and the appropriate parking spaces for the number of staff. So they'll be required to submit details on the number of um, floor staff, directors, food staff and things like that to um, to council, so we'll, we'll be able to derive the parking rate from that. So the reduction in the number of children reduces the size of the building as well, reduces the noise impacts, but also gives more spaces for manoeuvring of vehicles and things like yeah. that. Yeah, um, and to my mind, I think that's the missing link. Um, it's still receiving questions um, and quite a flurry of them over the last 24 to 48 mm. hours with regards to the way that this paper is written and the interpretation of what council's final position actually is. Mm. Um, but it's contained very clearly within the conditions um, that we see. And for those playing along at home, page 20 um, of the separate attachments report, um, yeah, we can clearly see that 6A, the childcare centre, um, is approved to operate with 75 children mm. at any one time. Mm. Um, and just the significant impact mm. that that has on the applicant um, and you know, they, they have to essentially redraw mm. uh, or quite a substantial redraw before they come back to council um, so that we can essentially check off that they have met these conditions. That's right. Um, so I think that there, there was confusion in the community that the response that the applicant gave to the independent, independent review panel's recommendations was the final application. Mm. And the final application that is seen in the report is the final application. That's right. However... Um, you know, and and it's a lot of words, and it's not it's not a very visual way mm. of seeing what could potentially be realised. Um, the officers' recommendations are really tucked away in those twenty six um, very well considered um, conditions that that we've placed on it. So, I thank you for that. Um, there was one question um, still um, that, to my mind, is yet to be resolved about the. Um, the need and the vacancy mm. rates of local daycare centres. Yep. Um, have we done any work to see, um, you know, what the actual vacancy rates are? I believe there's publicly available information yes. that we can access. Yes, yeah. there's a um, government-run website from the Australian government called Childcare Finder. Uh, it is a tool for determining available spaces in childcare facilities. You're able to search by suburb. Um, and I, I have looked at that personally, um, and it was... Part of the conversation um, during the IDRIP um, 
panel hearing about the availability of spaces. Uh, and just before I go too quickly into that, there's, I suppose there's two parts about the need. There's the immediate current need as of today, as if I wanted to send a child to a childcare facility, I'd need to find out if there's a space. Mm -hmm. But if I was to have a child in two years' time, I'd also want to know that that was available. So the information available is basically this week, next week, um, and you're able to, um, by age group, um, zero to 12 months, 12 months to um, 24 months and so on, determine availability. And, and from my review, there are some gaps in the availability, pretty severe gaps. So Mondays are quite difficult um, to get a space for a, a young child, a zero to 12 months. Yep. Um, th there are some gaps on Wednesdays and Fridays. It, it does vary, but if you needed to use one facility f for a whole week, you, would, you wouldn't be able to do that in Garrelly at the moment. You would be able to have one day in one facility and another day in a second facility. Um, and some facilities are completely booked out. So there, are, there is availability for older children, um, children that are also able to go to kindergarten and, and prep. So, so the information I'm presenting or speaking about is available on the Child Care Finder website. Thank you. Um, and just a final question, um, and this is with regard to the Independent Decision Review Panel. Um, the report um, in its executive summary um, has a bit of a recommendation here and that the IDRP recommendation is to agree with the proposed council recommendation to approve the development application subject to changes or inclusion of any additional conditions. Do we ever go back to this in independent panel uh, with our conditions to ask them if that they are actually satisfying the recommendations of the review panel? We, we are able to do that. Um, in most cases, the in, and in this case, the recommendations are clear enough for us to be able to to carry out on conditions. So, for example, the reduction in the number of children is as simple as applying that condition. Yeah. And the, the conditions from, from a traffic perspective are very specific. The panel members uh, do a great service to us by um, being able to um, elucidate their concerns in a manner that we are able to pick it up and turn it into a condition or a change. So uh, I think for other panel um, applications, we, we have sought clarification. I think the one less application, there was some clarification sought, but it yep. wasn't necessary. They were explicit um, enough. That's right. And do you feel that you're satisfied yeah, to I'm, that end? That's right, I'm satisfied. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr Bowles? No. No, thank you very much, thank Mr Bowles. Thank you. Appreciate that. The recommendation is that Council approve development that do the developer application as listed, subject to the conditions contained in attachment one of this report. Do I have a mover for that? I'll Councillor move. Fickner. A seconder. Thank you. Councillor Doyle. I'll now open it up for discussion. Uh, as the mover, I'd like to speak in favour. Sorry, um, my apologies, Councillor Fickner. Yeah, Please, I'd like to speak in favour of um, this recommendation to approve. Um, this application has seen much scrutiny um, and it's gone through a very thorough process to ensure that the end result um, is one that minimises the impact on the broader community and one that recognises the concerns um, and turns those concerns um, into a formal position where that can actually be translated into a condition for the development approval. And I think that the officers have done a really wonderful job collating all of the information from the independent review panel um, and incorporating that into a list of 26 very stringent conditions that will completely change the face of this application. Um, you know, the applicant still may not agree to, uh, you know, to the conditions that we're imposing on them, but these are the conditions that I believe come through and ring through the community sentiment that was heard throughout the entire process. I mean, we're asking the applicant to minimise the amount of um, the amount of children allowed at the centre at any one time from 100 down to 75. You know, that's a significant decrease. Um, and along with that, the impacts of the centre are significantly changed. Um, you know, and I, I could speak to, to all of the conditions, but they are outlined in the report. Um, hours, um, earthworks, design standards, like th this, this has gone above and beyond in my mind to ensure that the community sentiment is reflected in the conditions on this application. So I just want to thank the council officers uh, for their work and the independent decision review panel um, for being a part of this process and allowing us um, to have lots of opportunities for the community to plug in and be heard. 
I speak in favour of the recommendation I put forward. Thank you, Councillor Fickman. I think the original, I'm looking at Mr Bowles, was 116 children? Uh, at the beginning. Uh, at the beginning, down to 75. Yeah. Thank you. Um, open it for any other discussion. Councillor Milligan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I do note that, of course, the proposed development has been assessed with regard to the applicable assessment benchmarks uh, and that uh, we here in this place are now uh, determining uh, the matter in accordance with the framework. The matters that uh, really stick out in my mind, I have uh, engaged personally uh, in extensive consultation with the Carroll League community, uh, particularly those in the immediate area, uh, but also uh, right across uh, that suburb. Uh, the matters that uh, ring true are the number of signatories uh, to the petition uh, that I tabled on, on behalf of the residents and the number of submitters. Uh, we can view the application in that there is uh, one adjoining, immediate adjoining residential property. However, the, the impact uh, isn't just precluded just to that one property. Um, in terms of uh, effect of impact, uh, size of impact, uh, that one property, of course, will be mostly uh, impacted. It doesn't matter the number of uh, residents who are impacted. Uh, we, also, we must consider also the level of impact to even if it is just one resident. <coughs> the independent decision review panel uh, outcomes, of course, uh, very much took in, into account uh, the matters raised by the submitters. Uh, all those submitters um, submitted their information, uh, which was extremely relevant uh, to the matter. Also, would like to refer to the applicant's response uh, in writing. Uh, it wasn't from the, the applicant's planning consultant, it was from the applicant. And in reading that, I have concerns about uh, there is an, I'm reading an intent in there that there is, a, there is no willingness to comply with things such as the staff ratio to, to students um, with respect to the, the relevant industry standards. The matters that affect or are in, going to impact the residents of Carrolee uh, whether there are adequate parking for all staff, that's including support staff such as the cook and the director. I've heard uh, and taken note of discussion wherein it cannot reasonably be expected that the director of a childcare centre with 100 or in the case of the recommendation 75 uh, people in their care can also be on the floor at the same time, likewise as the cook. There are specific duties to be carried out there. I don't believe uh, that both duties can be carried out concurrently. The proposed development will have a significant detrimental impact on the amenity of nearby residents. I, I don't believe that the pro proposal demonstrates compliance with the required assessment benchmarks and that further conditioning uh, cannot be included to over overcome those conflicts. Some of those in, in particular that have been raised are uh, increased traffic volumes on uh, Somerville's Road and, and the Entrance Street. If there is insufficient on-site parking, then there will be overflow into the nearby street and that will impact residents in the immediate area. Regardless of what time it is, whether it's early morning, late afternoon or at school pick-up drop-off times, I have myself personally stood there at numerous times, numerous days, at various times and observed that the uh, the on-street parking by parents collecting students from the school or dropping them off 
uh, goes for extended periods of time, not just your standard quarter to three to 3.15. It extends well beyond that in the afternoon. Other specific matters that uh, I don't believe that the impact will be adequately addressed uh, by conditioning is um, the adequate on-site effluent treatment and disposal. Currently, the Carolee State School has a similar situation where um, effluent needs to be, on a regular basis, uh, trucked off-site. It's collected by vacuum pump uh, tanker and removed. I, I have uh, concerns with regards to the timings of the uh, arrivals of uh, that service and the, the on-flowing impacts from that. Um, I believe the proposal has a uh, detrimental impact on the amenity of nearby residents uh, due to that, uh, due to generation of odours, um, noise, and the, the waste product. Uh, the proposal also, I, I believe, does not provide uh, an uncongested traffic flow within the parking area. Uh, it's not only the vehicle queuing off-site uh, causing um, conflict between vehicles, but in the proposal that has uh, been assessed uh, within the on-site parking area, uh, there are matters where uh, large service vehicles will not be able to uh, manoeuvre on site to be able to uh, leave site in a forward gear. Um, Thank you. Whether, whether the restrictions from this um, uh, council's, uh, council officer's recommendation uh, affects the commercial viability uh, of the proposal is not a consideration in this matter. Um, the, the main point that, that uh, I have taken consideration to is that due to the impacts, it's not that the residents of Carolee are against uh, future childcare centres, uh, of course not. Um, it is that due to that specific location, that lot, uh, the impacts uh, won't be able to be managed um, accordingly. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Milligan. Uh, Councillor Kunzelman, you wish to speak to it? Thank you, Chair. As a Division 4 councillor, there are three influences on my decision. Council officers' reports and recommendations with due consideration of the conditions that will be imposed, the independent review panel recommendations and the developer's response, Residents' of opinions, residents' opinions and the degree of objection to which they are prepared to lend their names. The independent review panel agreed that the submitters' objections were worthy of consideration. I believe there are many issues that impinge on this decision. There are unresolved issues in relation to conditions, and in fact I'm not convinced that this development can be sufficiently conditioned to overcome the conflict and the loss of amenity. There are still significant issues with effluent treatment, noise, traffic and parking, as Councillor Milligan has outlined. I have listened and consulted extensively and have searched my heart for the right decision. And speaking for myself, I cannot agree with the development in this space. Having said that, it is important to acknowledge that with the current growth rate within the local government area, Residents are not promised that nothing in their suburbs will change. Further development at Carolee and elsewhere is inevitable. And we have to deal with this. And we are obligated to ensure that where suitable, development is not impeded. In this case, however, I cannot vote for this development. Thank you, Council Councilman, Council Tully. Yes, um, thanks, uh, Mayor. Um, I endorse the comments uh, of the previous two speakers and they are closer to uh, the action um, and, and the circumstances than um, certainly that I am. But 
I have read all of the documentation, um, particularly in relation to issues um, such as the non-conformity uh, with the large lot uh, residential zone, that the uh, need for the uh, development based on the numbers proposed by the applicant won't be met until 2041. There are other issues about the width of the landscaping in that zone for that sort of development. And that's particularly relevant to the, uh, uh, to the house immediately adjacent, but to the uh, wider residential community. And I think it's always important when the, um, an approval of a development within a residential zone is considered, it's not just how many people are affected, but even if there's one individual seriously affected, I think that's a matter for our, us as a council and as councillors to seriously consider. The um, proposed use, in my view, based on the information I've read, it provides inadequate uh, or insufficient car parking spaces. There are serious issues uh, about uh, refuse collection and the hours of refuse collection um, and efflu effluent collection um, on the uh, property. There is no sewer available, as people uh, would be aware. And, um, with such a large-scale development and the uh, manual uh, um, extraction of um, uh, uh, effluent uh, from the site leaves a lot to be desired. Um, even the report itself suggests that the, um, the pedestrian sight lines um, uh, may not comply with the, or proposed by the developer, may not comply with the Australian standard. And there's the overall issue um, that the development uh, the safety and security of users, um, pedestrians and uh, adjacent vehicular movement uh, would provide uh, serious safety concerns. Having said that, I won't be supporting the motion, but I wish to propose a foreshadowed uh, motion in the event that it's um, defeated, uh, Mayor. Please do, Councillor Tully. And I've just, in the last couple of minutes, provided it to the uh, committee clerk, and when that's up, I will read it for the uh, benefit of persons who... Uh, who are watching online. Um, may I just say something really briefly? I'd love to be present for the vote on this matter, but I've been working a lot of late nights and um, I've had a lot of coffee this morning and I would uh, seek your, an adjournment for five minutes so that I can yeah, return uh, for the vote. I would yeah, suggest... Like, like excuse. Ten. More than happy to do an adjournment at any time. May, may I let Councillor Tully this, this put his foreshadowed motion up? Well, Is perhaps okay? if I just read the motion... Uh, and then we'll, and and, then we'll do and the then, And then I will speak if that's to that's OK. Oh, well, sorry. No, no, I'm not speaking to the motion. I'm just foreshadowing yes. the motion. OK. Um, the Council refused development application number 5636-2021, MCU being a material change of use, community use, childcare centre, having regard to the 280 properly made submissions and a petition with 858 signatures objecting to the proposed development for the following reasons. A, the proposed use does not conform with the large lot residential zone as it will have a significant detrimental effect on the amenity of nearby residents in relation to inter alia, noise, traffic and community safety. B, the proposed use does not fulfil a community need insofar as the proposed number of places is excessive, given that the projected places based on population forecast will not be required until 2041. C, the proposed use is not readily accessible to the population it is intended to serve, as it will exacerbate existing vehicular conflicts in peak hours with the nearby Carolee State School. D, the proposed use does not comply with the scale and appearance provisions of the Community Use Code, insofar as the proposed 2.46 metre landscape buffer does not comply with a minimum width of 10 metres under the code, with such requirement being an essential buffer between adjoining residential uses. E, the proposed use provides insufficient car parking spaces as required under the, car, under the parking code, taking into account all required parking for parents, director, administration staff, support staff and frontline, frontline childcare workers. F, noise generated from the site will have an unacceptable impact on the adjoining and nearby residential community. G, the hours of operation proposed by the applicant are 6am to 7pm with refuse and on-site effluent collection between 7am and 7pm, seven days a week including public holidays, would seriously affect the amenity of the immediate area. The proposed hours of refuse and effluent collection conflict substantially with the main arrival and departure times at the site, adding to unacceptable amenity, safety and odour issues for staff, parents and children. H, 
as there is no on-site sewer available to the site and the proposed alternative on-site effluent tanks are not suitable for such large-scale development in a residential area. Potential health and odour issues are likely to affect the amenity of the surrounding area. I, the operation of the proposed waste storage and collection partially obstructs pedestrian sight lines and is not compliant with the Australian standard. J, the safety and security of users, pedestrians and adjacent vehicular traffic is compromised by the intensity and layout of the proposed development which creates more substantial conflict with the nearby Carolee State School. Thank you very much. It's a, now a foreshadowed motion and I think Mr. Manson, you had the, I would the like adjournment. To move an adjournment for 10 minutes. For, may I ask for 30 minutes? It's 10 o'clock anyway. Yeah. Thank you. Is um, that okay? 30 minutes. Uh, I guess if morning tea is a consideration. Yep, 30 <laughs> minutes. Come back at 10.30. Um, all those in favour? That's carried. Thank you.
Thank you. Welcome back from the adjournment. It's 10.30 and everyone is in attendance. Uh, before we adjourned, um, we had um, a mover and a seconder of the recommendation. There was some discussion and Councillor Tully has moved uh, quite a lengthy forwarded... Foreshadowed. Foreshadowed motion. So I'll just lift... I'll then... Thank you very much for that. I'll then move around to keep going around to the chambers to see if there are any other discussion points that uh, councils would like to make. So I'd like to step in there. discuss. Thank you, Chair. So um, I question the this development application. I think that it's impact accessible for a reason. Um, and I don't I believe that um, the residents won't be detrimentally impacted, particularly by um, the effluent collection vehicle. Um, I personally live across the road from a service station and um, whilst I can sleep through it getting ram raided, um, it is very, very loud when the trucks do come to refuel. Um, and I don't believe that truck drivers read DA conditions either. Um, I'm currently looking at putting cameras along Brisbane Terrace for conditions from the Red Bank Industrial Peninsula um, in relation to trucks using that incorrectly um, based on a DA condition. Um, so whilst I note that the conditions are there um, and are there uh, to, to help alleviate any impacts to residents, I don't believe from a practical sense um, that that will make a difference. I think that there'll be uh, a lot of complaints coming through if the effluent collection trucks are going on site during uh, business hours. Um, and if there's no exit point from the car park, I don't believe that a truck driver is not going to slam his gear into reverse um, to get out uh, of any area. So um, what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that there's going to be a lot of complaints come through from residents, um, probably from um, parents of the childcare centre if there's an effluent truck collecting there during the times of pick up and drop off. Uh, we're going to have associated costs with compliance. Um, they're going to have issues with that private company that were going to be wanting to come out of hours. Um, there will be one or two times most likely that they will come out of hours and then we're going to have complaints from the residents for the impact. So the fact that there's no city sewerage on this site is very, very significant for me um, and the, the character of the car park uh, is also um, yeah, quite significant as well. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Any other discussion? Um, I'd like to contribute, and I've got to say, when I first looked at this um, application, um, I looked at it and I thought, wow, that's great, having a childcare centre opposite a school. As a, as a mum of three kids who use uh, long daycare, um, you know, having the double pick up and drop off, I sort of looked at it and thought it was fantastic. Um, but I guess the devil's always in the detail. And when you look at the DA, it's moving from a rural residential zone property to a childcare centre. Um, look, an assessment has been, and I guess for me, I will be voting against this. And the reason for my decision is that an assessment of the application material for the proposed use has been undertaken against the relevant codes of the Ipswich Planning Scheme in 2006. The proposed development does not provide adequate parking for all staff, uh, including support staff such as the cook and director. The proposed development will have a detrimental impact on the amenity of nearby residents. Uh, it is concluded that the proposal does not demonstrate compliance with the assessment benchmarks and further conditions cannot be included to overcome the conflict. Therefore, it is recommended for a refusal based on the following. The proposed development does not comply with Part 4, Division 4, Large Lot Residential Zone of the East Planning Scheme, as the following overall outcomes or specific outcomes have not been met. Overall outcome section 4.4.2c, the proposal is not provided with adequate on-site effluent treatment and disposal. Specific outcomes, section 4.4.3d, the proposal has a detrimental impact to the amenity of nearby residents through the generation of odours, noise and waste products. Section 4.4.37, the proposal is not provided with adequate on-site effluent treatment and disposal. 
The proposed development does not comply with Part 12, Division 9, Parking Code of the Eastwich Parking Planning Scheme, as the following specific outcomes have not been met. Overall outcomes, Section 12.9.42A, the proposed design does not provide an uncongested uh, traffic flow within the parking area, thereby increasing the potential for ve vehicle queuing off-site and conflict between vehicles. And specific outcomes, Section 12.9.52A, the proposed development does not make adequate provision for on-site parking commensurate with the needs of the use. Is there any more discussion? I'll go to the person who moved it. Would you like a right of reply? Um, yeah, I just want to um, bring to everyone's attention a few of the points that have been made within the discussion. Um, that we have undertaken in this morning. Um, and I probably need a council officer to help me answer a few of the questions that I might have. Um, and just for clarification from a technical expert rather than me reading conditions verbatim. So if I could ask... Mr Bowles? Mr Bowles, if Thank that's you, okay. Do you mind studying your name and your position yep. again? Uh, Anthony Bowles, 18 Development Planning Manager. So firstly, I just want to speak to the um, adequate on-site effluent treatment um, within the proposal. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, in the applicant's current proposal, um, which is not being considered here this morning, rather mm -hmm. we're considering the conditions that Council um, is imposing on this particular application, mm -hmm. um, to your mind, um, has that or could that be potentially achieved with the conditions that Council has put on the applicant? Yep. So uh, just with respect to those concerns, um, there, there are some conflicts with the current plan and I understand those points of view, which is why we're seeking to reduce the proposal and the applicant is to submit new plans showing, demonstrating that the vehicles can enter and exit in forward gear and also manoeuvre on the site. So there, there are conditions also requiring the applicant to submit a management plan that will, um, that will deal with the, um, the times and the, the manner in which the collection occurs, so um, details about the tank and the, the vehicles and, the, and the, the vacuum system that is there. There's also restrictions on the hours of operation um, and also the hours of collection for the waste to manage those impacts. So the expectation is in, in the new design, we'll receive engineering designs that show the um, sweat paths of the vehicle entering and exit, exiting the site in a forward gear, being able to access the system, and a management plan that deals with things like odour and, and noise and, and so forth about the, um, the containment system and the bunding system to deal with the impacts of the effluent treatment, uh, effluent collection. So w we believe that there are conditions that can manage that and certainly that's the, the common practice is to condition some of these impacts. Um, and, and with respect to some of the comments about uh, compliance, uh, compliance with conditions can be a difficulty for council. However, the presumption is that conditions will be complied with. We, we aren't, if we were to take the approach that all conditions won't be complied with or that could be complied with and sometimes not complied with, the planning system um, would have difficulties with that because in 99% of the cases, operators act in the best interests of their business and the community and comply with their conditions. So we aren't able to have the presumption that they weren't able to comply, but we can construct conditions in a way that can be measured um, and compliance can be determined. And that hasn't always happened. There, there are occasions in the past where conditions are a little less um, uh, measurable. Uh, I think this one will be measurable as we've got hours of operations and we've got methods of determining compliance and non-compliance. So as a requirement, um, the applicant would have to submit a management plan. Um, That's right. Which wouldn't require the effluent truck to reverse on site. Um, the the, for, the vehicle should be able to manoeuvre in a forward gear. At the, in the, on the current plans, that is impossible. Yes. But, and, and that's why we seek new plans for that purpose, to, to, to demonstrate that. So the current proposal has that issue, um, and, and I understand that. So we are seeking changes to address that concern. Yes. Yep. So, yeah, we're addressing that by um, altering their hours from 6 a.m. till 6.30 p.m. for that collection um, and asking them to provide us with a management plan. That's right and expecting them to comply with that. That's right. Um, I guess the other, the other point that's been made this morning um, is with regards to the adequate car parking. Mm. 
Um, yes, in the current plan, I don't believe that there is adequate car parking, but Council's condition 6A that says that 75 children are allowed at the centre at any one time, does that condition um, go far enough um, to capture the adequate parking on site for the children and also the employees of the centre? I think the condition is specific enough that it mentions that support staff are included in the full-time equivalent employee count for the um, car parking rate. So uh, to draw upon a similar scenario, we have had actual applications come in where people have sought to change their development approval because they have hired more staff or they have hired more support staff and they needed to construct more car parking to accommodate those staff. So that, that happened in a child care centre in Belbert Park. So. We have had pretty good success in that space and making sure that enough parking spaces are provided. Certainly by reducing the size of the building from a building that can have the capacity of 100 children to 75 children increases consequently the space available for additional parking. So on one hand we'll be getting the information specifically about the full-time staff and support staff to then um, determine the amount of parking which would be demonstrated on the new plans that would be submitted. So I believe the conditions that we've um, drafted should be able to manage that impact. And I just wanted to briefly touch on the broader traffic network um, surrounding... Point of order, uh, Mayor. Um, the, the person responding, having been the mover of the motion, is not entitled to introduce new material either themselves or via a third party, and I think it's going beyond the nature of our debate, and the response should simply be the response to the specific matters rather than going back into more detail beyond what, what was discussed, and I, I've never seen a situation like this uh, in my time here, and I think it's in, inappropriate and it puts da staff in a difficult position. I'm seeking technical yeah. clarification if I could, if I could of matters speak, if contained I could, within the paper. If, if I could speak to that. Uh, Councillor Finney is doing a right of reply. I, as you'll find that I'm, I usually have a very informal uh, meeting procedure. Um, I do like, it's a very emotive topic it's in, in the community. I would like to give the Councillor the opportunity and I think he's touching on areas that, were, that have been raised. But thank you very much, Councillor. Continue, Councillor Finney. Yeah, I'm not of the view that I'm introducing new material. I just seek clarification on the difference between the application that sits in front of us and the conditions that seek to alter that for, for the applicant. Um, no further questions, though. Thank you, okay, Anthony. Thank you. <coughs> thank you. Um, um, so we're in the right of reply. Yes, yeah, sorry. So yeah. Thank you, Mr Bowles. Thank you. Do you have anything else you'd like to add, uh, Councillor Fechner, in the right of No, just that, once again, I'm satisfied with the conditions that Council has imposed on this development, um, you know, car parking, effluent yep. collection, um, they've all been covered off to an adequate standard to, to my mind, so that's why I reaffirm my position and I support the recommendation before us. Thank you, Councillor. i now put the matter to the vote. Those in favour um, of this um, report, please raise your hand. Uh, Councillor Fechner has raised his hand. Uh, those against, please raise your hand. And it's uh, myself, Councillor Madsen, Councillor Island, Councillor Johnnick, Councillor Tully, Councillor Milligan, Councillor Kunzelman. So the motion did not pass. We now look to the foreshadowed uh, motion. Thank you, Mayor. I won't, I I won't, we, we read it out before, no, Morning too. I won't, I won't no, make you read all, all no, up to I'll, A I'll to J. Form, I'll formally move the uh, motion um, that I, I read before the break. Thank you. And I think Councillor Milligan is seconding I'll second that. Mayor. that. Um, would anyone like to? Would you like to speak to that, Councillor? Yeah, just briefly, I think the. Um, I'll just make a few comments that this is a, um, a decision or a recommendation to. Um, have a decision to refuse this development application for the reasons A to J, which have been uh, specified in the recommendation. There's two reasons for the uh, uh, two, two reasons for the specification of that is that the Act requires council in the current circumstances to give its reasons for its decision, which is uh, different from the officer's recommendation, and secondly to set the scene for the substantive reasons for the few, uh, for the for the refusal. Now, th this uh, would then give uh, the right, uh, obviously if it's carried, of the applicant to go to the Planning and Environment Court um, and any of the um, objectors or submitters uh, would be able to join in if that went there. Now, Council is not bound um, by the reasons that are specified here. It could uh, utilise any or all of the reasons, as well as additional reasons, um, to um, maintain our position if it went to the Planning and Environment Court 
Now, I've touched on in the debate and also in reading uh, the recommendation the key issues, A to J, uh, for the refusal. I believe they're substantive. I'm not going to dwell on each one of those, but I think they are quite, quite substantive, um, that we do have adequate grounds for uh, refusing this application, that we should refuse it, we should re re respect the um, concerns of, of the serious concerns of a large number of people in the in the community, and um, I take some comfort in the fact that under the Queensland legislation, a matter before the Planning and Environment Court, an appeal is, re is called a hearing de novo. In other words. Uh, the court starts afresh from the start to determine the application, not who said what, who promised what, um, uh, and how the matter was proceeded with, rightly or wrongly. It's just simply uh, hearing uh, and determining the application afresh. But I would just urge councillors, having uh, made the previous uh, uh, decision to uh, uh, not to support the application, um, that it be refused on those grounds and um, uh, the future will, will take its course at least uh, we can hold our head up high um, as uh, in this situation and say that we've reflected the, the view, over, overwhelming views of the Carolee community. Thank you very much, Councillor Tully. I guess uh, for me, the, 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 um, my reasons for decision are also tabled there. I agree with you there and which parts of the planning scheme they apply to. So thank you very much. Um, for any other discussion? Yes, Councillor Bligger. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would like to uh, just uh, bring to notice of uh, uh, the Chamber that uh, two of the submitters uh, on this proposal have come to this place and are sitting in the gallery uh, observing. I, uh, in discussing this matter, uh, hope that uh, this motion gives further uh, confidence uh, to the Ipswich community that this elected council does consider all matter uh, on its merit, uh, whether in the for or against uh, in deciding, and that uh, clearly uh, councillors, regardless of division from where they elected, are here to represent the entire Ipswich community. Thank you. If there's no other uh, discussion, we'll, no, don't need a right of reply, I guess, Councillor. We'll put, the, put that foreshadowed motion, A through to J, uh, to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. And I can see it's myself, Councillor Madsen, Councillor Island, Councillor Johnny, Councillor Tully, Councillor Bedoyle, Councillor Milligan, Councillor Kornsman. Those against, Councillor Fechner. Thank you. So that motion was carried. Um, May I just say that I want to thank um, all the councils. This has been something that we've really spent a fair bit of time um, weighing up our obligations of a growing city as well as the concerns of residents. It's something that we've taken quite seriously from council officers listening to residents and so on. So I want to thank everyone for an open and robust debate in a professional and respectful manner. Thank you very much. Could I just endorse what you've just said, but also to particularly thank the council officers who have kept us informed. Okay. It's, been, uh, it's been a long journey, but uh, we've, we've received good advice. Thank you, thank Councillor Consman. We'll move on to item 15.2, which is the uh, procurement tender 16830, the civil construction works for Springfield Parkway and Springfield Greenback Arterial Stage 1. There are three recommendations there in our pack. Would anyone like to speak to the relevant council officer on this particular matter? May I speak to the relevant council officer? Uh, from a procurement perspective, please. Richard White, Manager of Procurement. Thank you. Uh, Mr. White, would you mind outlining um, how the buy switch procurement policy impacted this procurement, this tender evaluation to, to ensure a higher content of uh, local businesses? Um, happy to, yes. Yeah. So, uh, buy switch approach uh, for over $200,000 tender requires uh, that 15% of the weighting be given to consideration for local content. 
Um, it is different to our sub 200,000, which requires local businesses particularly. In this case, we recognise the, the significance and uh, impact on market and instead require that they indicate how much they would be spending. Uh, for this one particularly, we've garnered um, the response to say that 22%, uh, which is roughly $4 million worth of the contract, uh, would be spent with local suppliers, um, which for, for the size and complexity of the contract, knowing that uh, there is a lack of supplies in the Ipswich area particularly, um, this is the best outcome that we could, we could hope for. Okay. Thank you, Mr White. Are there any other questions of Mr White? No, thank you, Mr White. I move recommendations A, B and C together. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Any discussion? No discussion. I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you. Now that it's been voted on, I can say who it is. Okay. <laughs> I could uh, let, you, let you know that uh, now that that's been passed, that Council will enter, enter a contractual arrangement with EPOCA Constructions uh, for the total sum of, of um, two million eight hundred and thirty-five. Two million. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. My apologies. It was written first. Sorry. My apologies. I've just what, jumped ahead. My apologies. Sorry, it's written first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It was written before that. My apologies. We'll move on to 15.3, which is the procurement construction of youth skate park at Red Bank Plains Recreation Reserve. We have recommendations A through to B. This is concerning a report and recommendation to award a tender for construction of youth skate park at Red Bank Plains Recreation Reserve. May we speak to the relevant, like, relevant council officer, please? Richard White, Manager of Procurement. Thank you. Um, so probably similar to the my previous question, what has been done to ensure our lo local businesses um, I this. Uh, uh, very similar to the previous one. Um, sadly for this one, I can't get the exact number. Um, the information that I have available is that uh, particularly they'll be looking at quarry revegetation um, supplies in the local business areas to, to be engaged. Um, we're in the final stages of, of, sort of identifying the, the suppliers or the subcontractors for this contract. Um, and then we're looking at having a, an exact figure, but they've identified revegetation and quarry, quarry, um, quarry subcontractors would be local suppliers. And mm. ask what um, community consultation was done in the design of this, or how is that going to, how is the, the needs of the local community at Rebecca Plains? Yeah, I'll throw to my construction Thank you. Our colleagues for that. Thank you. You might say your name and your job title. Yep, and Bailey, Principal Officer in Construction. Thanks, Ms Bailey. Ms Bailey, do you mind letting me, if, taking us through what community consultation has been on or how we're making sure that we build a really great facility for the people of Red Bank Plains? Yep. Um, before we even started design, I believe we went out to um, uh, the community through the Shake Your Ipswich platform. Um, we received feedback from that, which drove the, the design. And I know we're about to release, basically, um, a, an update on, on that um, to the community through Shape Europe switch. Um, I personally wasn't involved in the process, but if you want a more in-depth um, response, I can speak to the relevant officer and provide that to you. Right, so there was a consultation, and yes. then was that provided as part of the tender, or is, yes. is there a group that the successful tender speaks to, or what's... So, or the, it so it, we've had a design, so we've gone out mm -hmm. for this tender, it's just for construction. So prior to the design being done, we went out to the community through Shape Europe switch mm -hmm. to get... Um, some feedback on what the community would like to see um, within the skate park. We used that information to um, develop the design. 
and then from that we've gone out to an, a contractor and, and developed the design and now we're up to a construction phase. So we're going out to Just Construct. Just so construct. it's really just an update that's going out now to the Shape Europe Switch platform. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bell. Any other questions? Yes, yes, Councillor Island. In your Just Construct, does it include lights? Yes, there is lighting and CCTV cameras to um, the facility and the footpaths. Okay. And where's the closest car parking? That's down at the picnic area. So there's the car park that we've just built in the um, as part of the toddler play space upgrade. So there'll be a footpath link to that. And there'll also be a footpath linking to the existing car park to the east, which is near the soccer fields there. So there'll be footpath linking from both sides so to the... So are you going to open up that little stub that will... Uh, there won't. That's not as part of this construction. There isn't the intent to build that road through. Um, it would be accessed through that, that road off Cedar, Cedar Road. The internal um, road through to that car park would still be the way you would access those two car parks. OK, thank you. Any other questions of Ms Bailey? Thank you very much for that. Thank you. I move recommendations A through to C. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Island. Any discussion? Thank you. Uh, OK, I think Councillor Madsen. Um, thank you, Mayor. The um, Australian Bureau of Statistics has said that Red Bank Plains as a suburb is the third highest suburb in Australia with zero to 14 children uh, for population and closely following on from that is Ripley Valley. So um, Red Bank Plains is, doesn't have sufficient activities, especially for the 11 to, to 14 age group. We're very limited in what we provide. There are sporting fields, but again, you have to be able to afford the fees to play. Mm -hmm. So I am pleased to see that, um, that this is going to finally be built because um, for me, it was mooted in about 2017. So I'm pleased to see that it's actually coming to fruition. And um, hopefully somehow it'll link up with the children's library that I hope will go back into Red Bank Plains Library in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Island. Councillor Madsen. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to say that um, I'm very pre pleased to see this project progressing. The, um, the Red Bank Plains Recreation Reserve is probably one of the best assets that this city, city has for its people. Um, Red Bank Plains has been built out in a period where higher density has um, been dictated by the various planning mechanisms. So these spaces for the community to come together in and play and interact and be active are really essential. And um, I'm very proud to see council investing in those sorts of facilities in um, that part of the world. Um, we've all been at a lot of school graduations in the last week and award ceremonies. And I've seen the um, first hand, the, um, the beautiful families in Red Bank Plains and all the wonderful children. And um, for them to have facilities that are built to a high standard, um, I'm really proud to be associated with that. Thank you, Councillor Madsen. You know, I think it's a natural progression. We've got a great toddler area, a great little area for primary school kids. It'd be great to see this skate park get up and done. Um, is there any other discussion? No, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you. It's passing carried. And again, I beg the indulgence of the Chamber. My apologies for preempting. It's actually this particular motion where um, I'll announce that um, um, Epoca Constructions uh, will be the successful um, tender for that. My apologies to the Chamber for jumping the gun there. Thank you. We move on to 15.4. which is the Terms of Reference Review for the Standing Committee. So this report is concerning the review of the City Council Standing Committee, performance structure and terms of reference. And of that, we do a regular review of our uh, terms, of condition, uh, terms of reference to ensure that we maximise uh, the output of our committees. Would anyone like to speak to the relevant council officer on this particular report? No? In that case, I'll move recommendations A, B and C. Do I have a seconder for that? Yep, Councillor Kunzelman. Thank you. I'll then open it up for discussion. Any discussion on this report? Yes, Councillor Kunzelman. Thank you, Mayor. I'm pleased to see the introduction of um, the matters of public interest uh, provision. 
and I give notice that I will be submitting a matter of public interest in January. Wonderful. Thank you, Councillor Kunzelman, for that, that uh, inclusion. If there's no other discussion, I'll move the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you. It's unanimous and carried. 15.5, which is the uh, report on the Audit and Risk Management Committee from the 24th of November. Does anyone have any questions of the relevant council officer? No, in that case, I'll move this report. Does anyone have... Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Kunzelman. Any discussion on this report? No, I'll put this report to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous and carried. Item 15.6, I'll just pause. Thank you. Thank you for that. 15.6 is a development application recommendation. Uh, 15770 of 2021 MCU material change of use for 11, 19 to 25 and 27 Nicholas Street, Ipswich. Would anyone like to speak to the relevant council officer for this? No. Um, in that case, I will move the recommendation that council approve the DA being a material change of use um, to recreation use, indoor recreation gymnasium, subject to conditions as contained in attachment one of this report. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Any discussion? I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous and carried. We now move on to item 15.7 which is a development application recommendation for 16204 of 2021 MCU cha material change of use of Five Union Place and 8 Bill Street, Ipswich. Would anyone like to speak to the relevant council officer on this? No, in that case, I'll move that council approve this DA being a material change of use, extension to business use hotel, subject to conditions as contained in attachment one of this report. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Any discussion? There being no discussion, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you, it's carried. I'll now pause. Wait for Councillor Fitton and Councillor Doyle to come. For Councillor Madsen. Madsen. Thank you. We now move on to a late report, which is 15.8, uh, which is on the proposed ministerial call-in. This is this council's response uh, to Wanless. And the recommendation is that the Chief Executive Officer provide a response to the notice of proposed call-in dated the 29th of November 2021. And the response is to contain at minimum a summary of the matters subject on the matter of this particular report that we've put up. Would anyone like to ask the relevant council officer any questions? Um, may, I, may I ask the call the relevant council officer? Lectern, please. Morning, council. Brett Davey, Manager, City Design. Thank you, Mr. Davey. Thank you for putting this, this pack together at short notice as well. Um, some of the letters in here, it's quite an interesting read. Uh, some of these letters here, for instance, from March 2018 onwards, have they been published publicly before or these were the first time that they've been...? Uh, not to my recollection. I think this is the first time they've been made public. Yep. OK. Uh, were you involved with some of those letters in the past? Uh, yes, I'd say all of them. Yep. Yep. OK. Uh, thank, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Councillor Island. 
Um, I, I think that we need some clarification because the media release by the state MP says that it's not being called in, that the minister is asking the community and council uh, for, just for more information. So at what stage does it become a call in? Yes, yeah, so this um, correspondence is a precursor to the call-in. It's a notice of intent from the Minister. So the process is the Minister makes it clear that he's got an intention to call in. Uh, in this case, he's given a time frame to the 21st of December for people to have their say um, in terms of the, the groups that's been targeted to the assessment manager as us uh, and the um, submitters that are associated with the application. So all of those parties have the ability to make comment on this proposal before a decision is made. I would uh, not presume the thoughts of the Minister or the State on the matter, but the 21st will be the date for those submissions to come in. Sometime after the 21st, they will make their, their decision and an announcement will come forth of whether they will call the, the matter in or not call the matter in. Uh, I expect that will not be before Christmas, though. Any other questions of Mr Davey? Thank you, Mr Davey. Thank you. So I move this recommendation. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Kunzelman. In speaking to this, um, this report I found very interesting. It's found a, found a consistent theme in regards to um, what is a state interest or not. Um, we certainly found back on, and I'll go through the paperwork here, um, we have had a notification from the state indicating um, a consideration to exercise the call-in. And as we go through the paperwork, you can see uh, the former mayor back on the 2nd of March 2018 wrote to the state government um, asking for four large landfills, much bigger than the one that's being considered here with Wanless, um, to, to call them in. And the response from the state, and I'll, I'll quote from here, uh, upon review of the Swanback development application, this is dated from the minister in 2018, I form the view that the development does not involve a state interest in a manner that warrants a call-in and that the P&E court is the appropriate forum for the matter to be resolved. Consequently, will not be issuing call-in notice. I note that the acting mayor back in on the 13th of June 2018 wrote again to the Queensland government, again asking for a call-in, and again the state government came back saying they would not call it in. It didn't address the state interest. I then refer to a, meta, a letter from the Interim Administrator on the 12th of August 2019, again asking for the state to call in those landfills as a matter of state interest, and again it was knocked back saying it wasn't a matter of state interest. And I guess in leading this discussion with my colleagues here, um, I, I guess I'm trying to grapple with the fact that uh, why is this particular uh, landfill application now a state interest when it's so clearly doesn't matter who doesn't matter who is sitting here, who's sitting there. It's been consistent from the people of Ipswich that we don't want any more new landfill. We've got we've got eight privately owned landfills. We've got uh, capacity there for I think it was 19 years or something. I saw in some of the paperwork um, for that. So I guess I'm open to discussion on the, on the floor here that we we stay true to our um, the IDRP process that went through and and through the to the council resolution that we made that we very much support the recycling component of, of Wanless, but we do not support a brand new uh, landfill in, in Ipswich. I guess I'll open up to the floor for, for views. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I might just want to amend the recommendation um, to ensure that the correspondence is circulated with the elected group before um, it's officially sent to the minister. Um, Oh, OK. Yes, so, yes. Because uh, we're asking the Chief Executive Officer, obviously. How would you like to amend and that? And B, and B, so that can be A, and that B, that, that, that the correspondence be shared and approved by the elected representatives by Before mayor, being mayor and councillors, yeah. Yes. Before being sent out. Prior to, Prior, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, um, through you, Mayor, um, just for consistency in terminology, 
we're talking, we're, B is now referring to that correspondence. Response, so let's response. call that the response, please. Yes, the response. I'm happy for that. that yeah. I'm, I'm happy, as the mover, I'm happy for that change, Councillor Kunzelman. Yes, yes, you're. Okay, thank you. So that's the, they're the active motions on the, on the floor. Yes, right. I speak in favour of um, reiterating Council's position. I think it's important for the Minister um, to have the ability to understand this issue from Council's perspective. Um, obviously, as stated in the report, there's lots and lots of history um, here and, um, you know, the last minister that was written to appears to be Cameron Dick, so um, a new minister requires fresh information to be presented to him and I just want to reaffirm Council's position. We made the right decision at the time, you know, and I think that if the minister uh, were to call this in, it would be a red-hot shame for our community um, who fought hard to get this result alongside their council um, to ensure that we were making a decision you know, in the community interest uh, and that they weren't impacted by that. Um, so, you know, I guess a few questions for the minister, and I'm sure that CEO, you'll capture this in the response, is, you know, what constitutes state interest now that didn't prior, um, you know, with prior correspondences dating back to 2018? Um, so I look forward to hearing the minister's response, and I encourage the community to have their say between now and the 21st. This is our opportunity. Thank you, Councillor Fechner. Councillor Ireland. Thank you, Mayor. I support your um, Councillor Fechner's comments, and um, I know that the submitters on the last three that went in that have spent two years putting effort into doing responses and turning up at court, I know that they're very nervous um, because they feel that they have spoken on behalf of the community, but. Um, it may all get overturned. So there's a lot of nervousness around Willow Bank at the moment. Thank you, Councillor Island. Thank you. Um, Mayor, I, I concur with everyone's comments uh, here this morning. Just like to add, I'll certainly um, be looking forward to seeing the response um, drafted uh, that we um, are looking... Um, to provide, I, I just want to ensure that, um, and I, I'm sure it will, it will speak to the very robust decision making that's occurred here in, in, in making the original decision. Uh, that is extensive work by uh, the relevant uh, officers in council, uh, the independent, independent review panel, and then of course, um, our work um, as, as elected reps in reviewing um, all of the documents, ensuring we were making the correct decision. So uh, the process was there, is there, and it, it's open, um, I guess, um, for further discussion. However, I, I, I you know, I'll, I'll certainly be looking to ensure we're outlining all the hard work and due diligence that's been done. Thank you, Councillor Dorff. Councillor Madsen. I just wish to state that I remain confident in the decision that we made as a council some weeks ago now. Um, it's going to go through this process, which we'll all be watching. Um, and, yeah, I just hope that the community continues to be consulted about decisions that impact them. I think that that's a great principle in our dem democratic society and every level of government should adhere to it. Thank you, Councillor Madsen. Any other... Discussion points? Just pardon me. I feel I'll give the, the CEO at the floor. There are others in the room that are more technical experts as me uh, than me, rather, for uh, council resolutions, but I'm just a little concerned about the use of the word approved when outside of uh, an, an ordinary council meeting or a committee with delegations. I understand the intent, but yeah, or supported. supported I was, I was thinking. Um, so look at changing. Old Councillor Tully, your expert. Yeah, typically, what we do in these cases is to use the word consult, consult with the mayor and councillors prior to the uh, the matter be being sent. That's exactly. And, and that didn't require an approval for the reasons that yep. you said, but did require genuine consultation. And on the very odd occasion, sometimes something significant would come up and be agreed to informally by councils with council laws, which would 
you know, um, cause a change. I, I think that's probably a good word to okay. use in these sorts of cases. In that case, I'll move it for recommendation B to change that. Um, oh, that Vicky's written up, writing up there. That consultation occurred between the Mayor and Councillors on the response prior to being sent. Thank you, CEO. Thank you, Councillor Tully. As the mover, I'm happy with that. I'll just check with the seconder, Councillor yes, Kunzelman. Thank you. So the, the, live, the two recommendations, A stays the same and B has been amended. Thank you. If there's no other discussion, I'll put recommendation A. Oh, I'll just wait. I'll wait, sorry. I'll wait till Vicky finishes. I move that A and B, that, as you can see on the screen there. All those in favour, please vote. Raise your hand. It's unanimous and carried. Thank you very much. Item 16 is notices of motion. There are, sorry, 16. And item 17, questions on notice. There are none. I move a procedural motion to suspend meeting procedures just for four minutes to provide a year in review, if I may. I have a seconder for that. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. All those in favour? I think it's unanimous. Thank you. As the last meeting, today's meeting is the, the final meeting of Council for 2021. And what an extraordinary year it has been in every sense of the word. Last year, 2020, was a year of unpre was unprecedented in our lifetimes and brought with it great challenges. This year, 2021, has been equally remarkable, but perhaps for different reasons. As a nation, we've continued to deal with the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, jugg juggling rapidly changing public health orders, lockdowns, new variants, and doing things remotely and online. For us as a council, it's certainly also been an extraordinary year. We are now, believe it or not, into month 20 of the 48-month term, or a four-year term, as we're all elected in March 2020. 2020 was spent supporting our community through COVID, rebuilding trust and stabilising our council. 2021 has been a year of delivering for our city and for our community. This year we've passed a record city budget with record funding for infrastructure, appointed a new CEO, opened this administration building and the Children's Library. We continue to assist the state government in managing the COVID situation, created and implemented important COVID support measures such as buy Ipswich procurement policy and continued on our pathway to be the most open and transparent council in the nation. If I look towards the budget, in 2021, Council took a strategic decision to focus our budget and invest heavily on infrastructure, including asset maintenance and rehabilitation, investment in new work and a focus on delivering across the whole city. This year's budget saw a record 532.3 million total spend, including $156 million in capital works and continued investment in the Nicholas Street precinct. We introduced a dedicated curb and channel program um, including um, for our established suburbs, a dedicated rural roads program and a three-year capital works forward program. Published on Council's website, the three-year capital works program gives residencies, residents transparency to let them know what's happening in their neighbourhood and help them hold us and Council officers to account on work we have said that we do, our community deserve and an accountable Council. Curbside collection has returned as part of Budget 2021 and Council has increased its commitment to sports and community clubs and the arts and culture in this year's budget. As a responsible and accountable Council, we take sustainability seriously. We have taken active steps to reduce our contribution to landfill and increase our recycling activities. Along with Lockyer Valley Regional Council, we were the first Council in Queensland to introduce a trial for the Food Organics, Garden Organics or FOGO collection with a view to rolling out the service out citywide in the coming years based on the trial experience. And glass has been returned to the recycling bins. I also take, uh, I'd like to take this time to also thank Council Fecht for his uh, leadership in, in uh, successfully negotiating for the Plan levy to go up, a one-off one huge boost for our community. Thank you very much, Council Fechner. Council has also continued its support for businesses and residents going through COVID-induced hardship with continued rate relief and grant programs for struggling businesses. In regards to openness and accountability, as part of our drive towards rebuilding trust with the community, 
the nation's first transparency and integrity hub has continued to drive greater success to access data on council's finances and spending. We have maintained our commitment to posting details of council's finances, spending and councillors for all to see. We've even put the park mowing schedule onto an interactive map so all residents can see when their local parks are due for a trim, wet weather depending, of course. Other key stories this year have looked at uh, a look back on the Nicholas Street precinct redevelopment, the operations of council land bodies from previous eras, council's forward procurement schedule, and how payments received from the Tea Tree Energy Fund um, have been used. In regards to the Nicholas Street precinct, 2021 has seen the Nicholas Street precinct reach critical milestones. The new administration building opened in June this year, as did the Children's Library, the only one of its kind in the nation. It was a real honour to hear the delighted schools of children using the library for the first time, and I know it has been loved by thousands of kids, young, old, young and old since. The library is a truly amazing and wondrous place and a real asset to our community. Thank you to the staff who run this place and help to keep young ima imaginations fuelled. We also opened the new administration building earlier this year, marking a significant change in the way council delivers services. For the first time, staff are working from one location apart from the, the depot staff, but we're all here in one location, and now have a modern and contemporary facility to serve the community from. The new administration building is an asset to our community for the long term and something we can be proud of as a city. Progress continues on the remaining works in the Nicholas Street precinct at a great pace, and I'm very excited to be able to open the final pieces of this highly anticipated puzzle and share the final product with the community. As a council, we've also delivered a number of important steps in rebuilding council following administration. We have a permanent CEO in, in, in place with Sonia Cooper. Sonia, thank you for your leadership. When you stepped up to act as our CEO early this year, you've been a great support to, to myself and to the councillors, and I know the staff as well. And your leadership of the organisation has helped, to, helped it to flourish and grow over the course of the year. Congratulations again on your appointment and we look forward to tackling whatever 2022 has, will throw at us with your leadership to guide us and advise us. We've also continued to work on important changes to the way Council does business, such as, the continuing, such as continuing to improve the buy Ipswich procurement policy and new things like publishing a forward procurement schedule so that local businesses knows what, knows what, computer, what Council will be looking at to purchase in the time ahead. Our Council's Ford Procurement Schedule is published online. It's essentially the Council's order book and currently lists all major procurement the Council intends to make over the next 18 months, totalling over $91 million. Our buy for procurement policy has seen $54 million spent with local suppliers with a head or branch office in the Ipswich area in the past financial year. Our two Chambers of Commerce tell us this has had an enormous impact for our local businesses. Our experience in the economics of COVID has shown us that supporting local business to keep trading and to find new ways to do business is critical to ensuring they survive and that local economies stay afloat. I'm extremely proud of the way that Council is looking at new and different ways we can support our community through changing our business practices and the impact that we can have on the economy. Finally, the Greater South East was confirmed as the uh, Summer Olympic and Paralympic host for 2032. With Ipswich confirmed as host city for Olympic events such as the modern pentathlon and preliminary soccer matches. I'm delighted that Ipswich will be part of this unforgettable event. It will be something everyone in the city will cherish and remember for many decades to come. While the event itself is still the best part of a decade away, the hard work to plan and deliver begins now, and I know myself and fellow councillors are looking forward to the coming challenge. Christmas in 2022 looks very different to 2021 for it may be the first time that many have seen their family in two years. For some, it will be the first time they meet their grandkids, their grandmas, granddads, aunties, uncles and family and friends. We have experienced an extraordinary time in our collective history and either despite it or because of it, our city has weathered the storm and in many ways used the experience to emerge as a stronger community. Tumor Place below us is about to be transformed into the St Nicholas Precinct ahead of the coming Christmas season and will play host to night markets over the coming weeks. Christmas and New Year is often a time of reflection on how far we've come and to reconnect with family, friends and loved ones. As the year draws to a close, close, I encourage you all to take time out to rest, recover and recharge over summer to reconnect with your loved ones. Finally, I'd like to thank the staff here at Council who make the place run day in, day out, and serve the city and its people. Every single one of you play a part in building the community we love, 
and shaping our city for its residents and visitors. No matter how big or small a part you play, it's important and it goes a long way. From the road crews who build and maintain the roads we drive on, to the drivers who collect the bins, the city planners and building inspectors, the cultural centre and sports centre staff, the concierge and call centre staff, plus the many officers who facilitate community sports, arts, culture and economic development. Too many to specifically mention. It's all important work and on behalf of myself and my fellow councillors, thank you for the work you do to make our city such a great place to live and work. To my fellow councillors, thank you for a year of meeting the many and varied challenges that have come our way. I know we have had at times very robust discussions but these have been important in advancing our city and arriving at the very best outcomes. It has been a pleasure to work with you all and thank you for the long hours that you've all given to this city. I'm looking forward to 2022 being a year of continued delivery, of more firsts and a year to advance the work that we've started over the last 20 months. Importantly, I thank our residents and I thank you for your feedback, your passion and dedication to work together as a community for us all to reach our potential. Merry Christmas, happy holidays and thank you, and I look forward to working with you all next year. I now move a procedural motion to resume meeting procedures. May I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Doyle. All those in favour? It's unanimous. Thank you. I'll then close the meeting now at 11.26. Thank you.